Now this conversation is going to require headsets for non-Portuguese speakers. We're also waiting for Steve Stout, who is... Oh, I, I, I didn't see you. I didn't see you. You did. The CEO of United Masters in Translation. Welcome. Bienvenido. So Steve, since you jumped on stage, I'm going to begin with you. Is that okay? Yeah? All right. <laughs> so, can, me? can we hear Steve? We can't hear Steve yet. Let's see. Hey, can I just try? Well, you're the expert. One. Oh, yes. Okay, there we I go. We can hear Steve now. Let me say it again. Let's go. I'm excited. Okay, you're Let's ready. Let's do it. Let's keep this energy. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So, Steve, tell us, as someone who has been in the music business for a long time. You've even produced artists, I read, like Enrique Iglesias in yeah. Spanish, Mariah yeah. Carey. Yeah. Tell me about how Latin American music has changed over the last 10 years and the difference between Latin American music and Brazilian music. Well, overall, Latin, mu uh, Latin American music has exploded over the last, I would say, steadily over the last 20 years. Um, from the, like, the introduction of reggaeton um, to now different forms of, of music all around the world that incorporate rap and other rhythms, um, you've just seen it explode. And YouTube has been a great component of that because what you would find in a lot of Latin American company, uh, countries were people would watch the videos for free but not necessarily subscribe to Apple or Spotify. They would use um, YouTube and the access of YouTube uh, really grew audiences a lot. Um, now what you're seeing in Brazil because of independent music is the explosion of artists, the entire ecosystem, artists, uh, producers, production companies um, on the scene finding success and cutting out the middleman, the record labels, and artists are going direct so that they own their rights and own their masses which is unprecedented in the history of the music business that artists are able to achieve maximum success but now keep the rights versus giving it away to record companies. So Chago, ahora para ti la pregunta. Certo. Cuéntame, el rap en Brasil ha sido una sensación, pero ¿qué se necesita para que la música brasilera de ahorita, el rap, el trap, tenga la explosión global, el crecimiento global como la música latinoamericana. Ok, yo acredito que la lengua portuguesa ya es muy difícil de llegar. En... I believe that uh, Portuguese language is really hard to get in other countries, so we have a, a, a real barrier in this. Although we believe that uh, our culture is huge and we are able to uh, get people uh, add in with us and they're gathering with us. We are showing a little more about our culture in video clips and it's where we can visualize what is really happening, not only listening to this, I believe it's a way to expand our career and we are able to reach some other places. On to you, Steve. Yeah. Streaming, you were talking about YouTube, so streaming makes up almost 90% of music revenues yeah. in Latin America. Yeah. Tell us about these new investment models. You talked about independent artists. For the investors in the room and the pool of capital in the room, where would you put your money in terms of entertainment in Latin America and in music specifically? So I would tell the investors in this room who have an appetite for entertainment in general, um, specifically the legacy music companies, Sony, Warner, Universal, their business model was buying the artist early in their career and then owning their rights in perpetuity. And that's what made record companies have, you know, these valuations of it's a $40 billion, $50 billion industry. What's taken place is that the, the, the newer artists, the younger artists, are not allowing themselves to get caught up in that model. So if I was an investor, I would invest in the independent music scene because it's taken tremendous market share from the major labels. I'll give you an example, and I know you guys all like data on the investment side. Spotify paid out $9 billion to artists last year. Half of that $9 billion went to the independent music business. That's how fast the independent music business is growing. Um, the independent music business is the fastest growing segment worldwide of the entire music industry with Latin America leading the charge on that growth. 
So is there a particular artist, a success case that you've experienced personally that you would like to share with people here? Listen, I'd like to share, like since we're in Brazil, we might as well talk about they and uh, our partner Supernova. Um, uh, Gustavo from Supernova is in the audience. These guys, if you just look at what they've accomplished in the last two years, back to the ecosystem, they put out music through our independent distribution system. They've earned, uh, uh, they've done very well, earned a lot of money. They reinvested it in studios, reinvested it in his career. Uh, Ve goes on tours. Ve uh, works with other producers. Uh, uh, they sign more producers. And you can see this thing grow tremendously. So he's been a great and tremendous success story, uh, Brazil's own uh, Ve. And I'm very proud to share the stage with him uh, Mucho orgullo, mucho orgullo, Ve. <laughs> you're 22 years old. And just like Steve explained, you're, you're a partner in your own, yes. in your own company. So what do you think of this trend of artists owning their own music? ¿Qué opinas de esta tendencia de que los artistas sean dueños, tengan poder de los derechos de su música? Sí, yo soy un artista de 23 años, como Steve dice. Hoy I'm an artist, I'm 23 years old, like Steve said, I have my own label, it's called Supernova. And for me, it's a great triumph, not having to get inside a label and having my own. I began myself uh, uploading my music to the internet so that other people could listen. Me, I would be doing my own clips, my own videos. And the power that an artist has today is very, a very strong one. And many people didn't understand that. They thought that you could only be a great artist if you get into some kind of movement that already exists and not by creating one. As an entrepreneur of my own company, we try to bring more people from the outskirts for them to understand that this movement is not as complex as it looks. So we put in their minds that they can do it, they can create. And I believe that from now on, many people will be creating more companies and making bigger things than just associating to ex already existing companies. I'm 23 years old, I have my own company, my own label, and thank God I'm very proud of myself. I don't want to share this knowledge with other youngsters in the outskirts so that they can have uh, this same growth that I had and know that they really have this power with them. Yeah, and the, <laughs> and the grassroots aspect of what you call a movement, right? And generating those super fans that are going to follow you, to super fans que, se, que te van a seguir. Now, Steve, we can't not talk about one of the, the two letters that have been mentioned on this stage, probably more than anything except FII, which is AI. Yeah. How do you think AI will transform the music industry, especially also in terms of business models. Guys, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys something really shocking. So the fifth largest category on Spotify is waves and like sleep music, wind. Okay? ASMR. Right, so you hear, if, you, if you wanna listen to waves or calm music, whatever it is, sounds, that's the fifth largest category on Spotify. The same when Beyonce streams a song, whatever song you like from Beyonce or Taylor Swift, and somebody streams wind, they get paid the same amount for that stream. Okay? So the artist who spends all that money doing that in the studio, the wind, and now that wind sound is being generated by AI and all those comm sounds. So it's creating, that's one side of it, that there's um, this economic, uh, there's an economic tension in the model as a result of those things getting paid. The other thing is rights. The fact that AI can copy someone's voice, tone for tone, uh, letter for letter, uh, each nuance of it, and the laws allow that to be the case right now is problematic. Because you don't know if you're listening to the artificial version of someone or you're listening to the real version of someone. And the truth of the matter is, it's still not settled yet. We're still going through that in the music business right now, trying to sort out whose rights is it if somebody can copy 
through artificial intelligence, your voice. Because you can own the song and you can own your image. Yeah. But no one owns tone. No one owns cadence. Mm. No one owns the sound of their voice. And that is absolutely the toughest issue right now facing AI and the music industry. So it's in transition, but it will undoubtedly impact how we monetize in the music industry. I think uh, a critical word that we also mentioned in the uh, panel about art is authenticity, and that is what cannot be replicated truly with AI. So, Vane, when it comes to your music and your authenticity, how do you connect with your fans? Como te conectas con tus fans, con la generación Z? Certo. A minha conexão com os meus fãs e com a geração mais nova é. My connection with Generation Z and this new generation is uh, a strong one because I, I consider it to be an artist that have a strong base here in Brazil and outside of Brazil as well. So I believe that my connection with them is very important in the sense of how I behave, how I portray myself. I, I can, with my lyrics, I, uh, let them identify themselves with simple situations. Uh, it, it, simple situations that an an a teenager deals with and i think they identify themselves a lot with that and also in the entrepreneurship situation i believe that in the the chairs of the companies we should have young heads thinking like us so that we can add i believe that sometimes some places must be occupied by people from generation z because whether you want it or not, no matter how grandiose the mind of a person is working for such a long time and understanding how the market works, the the feeling that, that Generation Z, the, the, the way they think, is something very new. So I think that this space should be occupied by these people that understand what's happening in the outskirts, on the streets, and they can uh, pass that message along. So I believe that some places should be occupied by Generation Z because they understand what's happening with a person like me and I understand what's happening on the other side. So I think that we can communicate in a better way. It's really beautiful and I love how you said that your music and the communication is inclusive, even including those in the periphery. Steve, over to you. Can this surge and this growth in Latin American music globally generate new business opportunities in Latin America beyond music? Oh yeah, I think, look, you know, music is the front end. I mean, I think we, we're seeing this right now where an artist or someone uh, puts out, you know, music and then it creates uh, the idea that they could start selling merch for mm -hmm. one thing and other e-commerce products. People are building beauty brands off of this. People are building clothing brands off of this. And obviously this lends to manufacturing of both beauty products and other products as well as clothing lines. So I believe that the music industry in general, like the creator industry in general, um, is first about getting attention and then using that attention to monetize it and finding different ways to create opportunities for yourself and um, for others. And we're watching that happen uh, really explode in America and now that's starting to trickle down into other countries in which the artists are seeing similar patterns, monetizing their fandom, and creating uh, opportunities and industries beyond just music itself. Thank you for that, Steve. And, I, and the J Balvin collaboration with sneakers, like that immediately came into mind. Uh, Vane, we only have one minute left, and I think that both of us on stage, but especially the folks in the room, they've come from all over the world, and they would love to hear a little bit of your music. La gente vino de todas partes del mundo para escucharte. Puedes cantarnos un poquito algo que estás trabajando. Deixa eu pensar em algo novo que seja interessante. É... Let me think about something new, something that could be interesting. There's a song that I call The New Balance, Novo Balance. So it's a track that I invite you to know. Today in Brazil, nowadays is the track that uh, it's been, uh, has the best numbers in rap music today. We have 300 million listeners today. And it's an important track for me 
because it was able to show a little bit of my voice to the world. And there is a part of it that I wanted to sing. It's a small part and it's something like this. I've always been here, but you didn't see. It's easier to be seen now. Now that we are strong for you, it works, but it wasn't like that. So this is a, a part that is very important that talks about, I've always been here, but some of you didn't notice. So this is Brazil and I invite you to see. Obrigado, obrigado. Thank you so much. Another big round of applause. Applausos. Novo balanço.